Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video here on uh, crimping uh, the JST X8 series connectors. Uh, there's part numbers for the, the parts if you're interested. Uh, but if you look into this video, you probably already have the parts and are just wanting to see how to crimp them. Now there are videos already available on YouTube that show how to crimp XH connectors. Uh, but I need a video from my client that shows good close-up detail and I was a little disappointed uh, in the lack of that on some of the videos. That's not to put anybody down. Uh, I just need uh, I need some real detail in what I send to my client. So we'll uh, we'll crimp one here and and uh, talk about it. Uh, this is a circuit board that uses the X8 series. It's a pretty popular connector. Uh, it's nice. They're polarized and uh, they're good for three amps per pin. So a popular connector. Um, so let's go into look at one of the <clears throat> one of the pins up close here. The wire would go in from this side once it's in the crimper. And these large tabs just crimp on the insulation. And this uh, smaller tabs here, my ink is uh, showing on there, would be for the bare wire. Um, the correct strip length, which is something that I see mistaken on other videos, the correct strip length for the XH series connector is 2 millimeters. And I see people, you know, stripping them almost a quarter of an inch uh, and then pushing the wire in clear up to the front here as far as they can get it. Uh, and that's not right. The, uh, the JST uh, spec on the wire stripping for the X8 series is 2 millimeter. So let's just, uh, let's just do one here. Pull off a pin. And have it ready. The crimper that we're using was an eBay purchase. Uh, you can spend 350 bucks and get the actual JST tool. And if you're going to do hundreds of connectors, well, if you can do hundreds, you probably get an a automated a, a device to do it, machine. But this is the uh, cheap runner-up for a, for a connector. This is about 20 bucks on eBay, and it does a great job. SN01BM. Different uh, manufacturers make them. The key in this is to make sure that the width of this die at the crimp area is four millimeters. Uh, it would be seven millimeters for say a DuPont style connector, but for the uh, X8 series, you need that to be four millimeters. Uh, let's see here, I already have a wire stripped. And we'll just take a look at that here. It's about two millimeters. Uh, three thirty seconds of an inch or so on the, the inch scale. So let's talk about putting this uh, pin actually in the crimper. It's a little trickier doing it on video than it is in real life. But let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. You want to enter it so that on this side of the crimper you have the larger tabs. Click. Click the uh, crimper so that it stay, keeps it in place and push it so that the, uh, that the pin or socket as it really is, is flush on this side. You want that flush. Because on this side, there is a uh, spring pin that holds that little socket in place. Kind of hard to show that here, but... There's a little spring right there, and you have to make sure that that doesn't get underneath the crimping part of the die. It should just be uh, up against it at this point. And if you have it flush on this side, then you're good to go. So, having prepared that and already stripped the wire, you take that wire, just insert it in where, where it goes on the socket, you can feel a gentle stop there if you put it in back and forth. And that first stop is where you want it to be for crimping. Now, some of the other videos showed them stripping the wire longer and really pushing it in there. And that interferes with the correct 
the operation of the mating connector. So just find that first gentle stop and then crimp it until the crimper releases. Pop it out of there. And there is what your connection, what your crimp should look like. Uh, notice that the insulation has its own crimp area and the bare wire has its own crimp area and the insulation doesn't go into that bare wire area. Make sure also that the little tab spring hasn't been damaged. If it's entered too far, it'll push that down and actually ruin the connection. So just make sure that that's sticking up like it should and that the pin is generally still formed right. And then you put it in the the connector housing. Now you can probably see there the place where that tab goes. And it actually goes into where it snaps into place in one of these grooves that's open in the top. So you just put the pin where you need it, push it in, you'll hear it click, and it stays snug. And there you have it. Now if you accidentally put the pin into the wrong place and you need to remove it, you can uh, go back online and look for a JSTXH removal tool. Fork out 50 bucks and it'll help you remove that. However, the easiest way to do that, or the cheapest way certainly, is take your X-Acto knife. Now this one, the tip on it is not a real, real fine point. It's been broken off and that actually is to your advantage. So. Uh, Anyway, you just uh, take that knife, push the, the wire in as far as it'll go, and then put your X-Acto right at the tip of that, push it in the slot, then as you're pulling on it, pull the knife out, and that pin will come out of there. Now you'll notice, most, uh, most likely, it will have pushed, flattened your little tab there. So you need to take your, your knife, spring that back up a little bit, so that it's ready for insertion again in the correct spot. So then just uh, reinsert it, push it in till it snaps, and there you go.